I got so dad gum excited about it working right that I forgot to turn the camera on. So, uh, I need to fix that somewhere different. But anyway, uh, so I'll turn the camera on. Big heavy harness leather. Being cut in the frame. Oh man, come on, come on. of the day is yes I will barely though ay, ay, ay. got here are some half inch and three quarter inch reins that I'm going to finish up on later today. Let me show you how I did this in case I forget. <laughs> anyway, you got to give yourself a little bit of room over here in case you've got a rough edge on that side. That's usually about a quarter inch. And then I put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a five eighths inch thick. So there's four pair of reins times twice. There's eight pair of reins in a five eighths. And then we've got one, two, three pair here. So there's six pair of half inch reins half inch i don't know if anybody uses a half inch or not but i thought let's do it so anyway that's the first step now i'll show you the second step later uh because i'm gonna try to put two or three short videos together toodaloo buggeroos part two coming up all right i'm back remember we were cutting reins well the next step I like to do, I don't know if everybody else does this or not, but I like to make sure I got, oh, I guess matching pairs. Not really matching per se, but side by side pairs. Simply when you've got a pair of split reins in your hand, well, you, you might not never feel the difference, but I would know the difference if one of them turned out to be a little thicker than the other or something like that. So that's why I spent about 10 minutes um, putting the puzzle together. I inadvertently kind of sort of scratched that right there, which by the time I'm done, you'll never notice it. So that helped getting all this together. This part here kicked my butt. I was going like, what the hell, where'd that? Because I was expecting to find another hole over here. But the rest of that must have cut off. So, And this one, I guess that first blade I've got in that roller is dull because it didn't cut it all the way through. Which I'll fix that with a, uh, I'll take a head knife and split it up. But, there's that section. Then I'll come back here in a second and I'll show you what we do next. Okay, so the next step is going to be to run it through my edger here.
basically what that does it cuts a beveled edge so you're not holding I bumped the camera and it turned off so like I was trying to say so you're not holding on to a set of reins that's got that rough square on them I like to start at the butt end because there's less stretch right there plus this machine uses a little hook to get that started and on the butt end is where your water loops are going to be so nobody will see it So there's what that next step is and I'll come back in a minute and show you the third step okay so the next step I've got going on here is using this old Western what's known as a bench master to do check it out check it out cut the tip and punch two holes these are on the reins the butt end of the rain and to do the actual water loops I just put two punches in pre-drilled tapped holes which I've already done those which they kind of sort of well these are just scraps that didn't cut right see how it's off centered how that one got crooked okay after I've gotten my holes punched I'm, I'm working my way around the camera tripod so I, that's what's taking me so long the next step is to go ahead and run it through my creaser this thing's probably gosh I don't know how old it is uh, but it's something they don't make anymore as you know Y'all have noticed I'm kind of into that vintage, old school stuff. You can't see my foot, but I'm trying to get that down there to put some pressure on it. All this does really is just put a nice like I said, a crease through it. Of course, it's wanting to focus way back here. It won't focus up close, huh? Anyway. But that's that sec. That's the next step in this process. And the next step will be to burnish the edges. Okay, kiddos, for my next trick, I'll show you what I do. Might not be the best way or the easiest way, but it's the way I figured out how to do it. Is I'll take a piece of, this is from an old pair of Dickies pants. Uh, canvas like that. And I'll get it a little bit wet. Then I'll come in and Take some of this glycerin bar saddle soap and get it in there like that. And then I like to go four times. See if I can do this without knocking the camera over. <laughs> Why four? Well, that's just because it's always been my uh, lucky number. What this does is two things. Number one, it slicks or burnishes your edges. Because nobody wants to see a fuzzy set of reins. 
Number two thing it does, there's three passes. Second thing it'll do is help stretch the reins. They'll continue to stretch their whole life, but this takes most of it out of it. Uh, and I think I forgot to show you that uh, I dip it in water. I dip the reins themselves in water for just a second, which helps with that there. So now this set's done. I'll drag them outside in the heat so they'll dry quicker. Toodaloo, buggeroos. Well, here is another step we take using my vintage equipment. Of course, I need a whole lot of blades made, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. But basically, what we're doing next is using that foot press there to cut the tip. Well, here is the ultimate last final step. I don't know about the ultimate step, but it's the last one. I cut these quarter inch strips with my strap cutter. And of course, then I gotta come back and put a little point on them carefully. You don't wanna cut your finger off. And I do it on both ends because they're gonna have to build, both be stabbed. Now, I don't, I don't do a point, a, you know, a sharp point right there because it'll just curl over too much. So now that I'm done with this knife, I'll put it up. And of course, the next step will be this right here. Grab one of these. In through here. About halfway. One, there's several different knots you could use right there, but I like this one better because I just do, I don't know why. <laughs> now it's ready. Of course, now your customer's going to have to undo that to get it onto their bit. So, I try not to pull them real, real tight like I just did simply because you don't have to make your customer go looking for a, a tool to pull that apart with. Does that make sense? Of course, you know, They'll have to tighten it up themselves. So there it is, kids. That's how we do reins here at David Mills Salary. Sorry for the long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Two new buckaroos. And don't forget to like and subscribe. www.davidmillsalary.com